In this video, we're going to cover the three best restaurant marketing strategies for 2023. First, we're going to talk about the best restaurant marketing strategy for getting new customers. I'll give you a hint on this one. It helps you get customers consistently from Google every month, but without needing to pay for Google ads and without needing to discount. Second, we're going to cover the best restaurant marketing strategy for increasing our average order size and ensuring guests order more from us when they do order and how a 10% increase in size if done correctly can actually lead to a 200% increase in profits with the right marketing strategy behind it. Third, we'll cover the best strategy for turning new customers into regulars and keeping them ordering from you regularly. What inspired this video was catching up with my friend Mo the owner of Talk and Tacos in Miramar, Florida, because his restaurant is doing all three of these strategies. I knew he was doing well because he's expanded ridiculously fast from one location to five locations in just three years. But when he told me some of the wild numbers he was seeing from each of these strategies, I knew that I needed to make a video sharing them with the broader restaurant community because these strategies can be game-changing to restaurants if used correctly. For this video, he was gracious enough to give me permission to share not only the strategies and how he's doing them, but also the numbers he's seeing as a result. Because now that he's reached this place where he's expanding very quickly and has franchisees pounding down his door, he wants to support the broader restaurant community with the lessons he's learned along the way. So let's start with the best strategy for acquiring new customers. The best strategy for getting new customers for a restaurant is Google SEO. You may be thinking, SEO? What? I thought it was Instagram or TikTok or Facebook because that is what we're constantly told by the so-called influencers in this space. And when I was first getting started in helping restaurants about six years ago, I thought it would have been Instagram or Facebook or now TikTok because of how frequently people say how powerful social media is. And Google SEO is often thought of as old school online marketing. So when I saw the numbers behind Google SEO, behind marketing, on each platform and how they compared, I was shocked and it changed the way I think about restaurant marketing. When you see the numbers behind Talk and Tacos online success, you'll understand why Google SEO is the best that restaurant owners can do to acquire new customers. Talk and Tacos is a perfect case study because they actually do both. SEO and social media, and they do both really well. And better than that, they have tracking in place on their restaurant's website over the past 30 days. So we can see exactly how many new customers each channel has gotten them. Over the past 30 days, they've gotten 500 new customers from online channels. But then if we click into the tracking to better understand where those customers are coming from, we see that 45 of those new customers came from Instagram and 457 came from Google. Like I said, Talk and Tacos does an amazing job of Instagram. They have 34,000 followers there already. They post every day. They average over 3,000 impressions per post and 400 likes per post, which is amazing. It means that they get exposure to over 90,000 people per month organically on Instagram. Super impressive. And yet, Google SEO is literally bringing them 10 times more customers. 457 per month from Google versus 45 per month from Instagram. So. Why is Google SEO outperforming social media 10 to one, even though they're getting a lot more impressions on social media because of the state of mind people are in who are searching on Google versus people that are on social media browsing. Let me explain. If you think about both places from the customer's perspective, when they're on social media, they're there to socialize with their friends and family or maybe follow their favorite influencer. They're there to be entertained. So when they see your restaurant picture, it might look good to some, but the odds are that the people who are seeing it aren't in the mood to buy from your restaurant at that exact moment. Instagram and Facebook and TikTok are also global in that you may have people who like what you post because it looks good to them, but who are based across the country or even across the world. So it's not practical to expect to convert the people that are engaging on social media into new customers. But if we compare that to Google, rather than people being there to socialize with their friends, when they're searching Google for best tacos in Miramar, Florida, they are already ready to buy because they've already decided, I want tacos and I'm looking for tacos in Miramar 
consumer mark. We can tell that from the fact that they're searching for that term. So now they don't have to be convinced to want tacos in Miramar, unlike people on social media. The only thing we need to do is show up first at the top and quickly convince them that talk and tacos is the best option for what they already want. So Adam, how do we do that? I'm glad you asked. SEO is this big category of marketing with a lot of different things you can do. But let's quickly break down the three highest impact SEO strategies Talk and Tacos uses to drive those 457 new customers from Google every month, but without having to pay for ads. The first strategy for SEO is creating menu pages for each item. This one is so easy to do, but it is so new that today only the most tech savvy restaurants do it. It's simple. For each of your restaurant's most popular menu items, you create a dedicated page on your website for them. That page has great pictures of the menu item because people love to eat with their eyes and has a detailed description on what the item is. Ideally, it also has relevant customer reviews that actually mention the item so that people have everything they need on that dedicated page to make a buying decision about whether to order that from your restaurant. You may be wondering, Adam, what is the point of giving each menu item its own page? The point is that there's dozens of people in your area that are craving specific dishes on your menu every month. In the Talk and Tacos example, Niramar is a city with a population of less than 50,000. And yet there's over 500 people per month in Miramar that are searching Google for birria tacos in Miramar and another 90 people per month that are searching Google for best guacamole in Miramar, Florida. And because Talk and Tacos has set up these dedicated pages for each of these, so they rank at the top for all of these terms, birria tacos in Miramar, Florida, best guacamole in Miramar, Florida. Multiply that by hundreds of searches a month and dozens of menu items, and you begin to see why this can be so powerful. What's extra smart about what they do is they have these pages integrated into their online ordering system with big add to order buttons on each of the pages. So guests, when they're discovering these items on Google, they can easily place orders on their website in less than one minute using Apple Pay for that dish that they're craving. And a lot of people make impulse buys just minutes after discovering their restaurant. Menu item pages are a huge part of how they're getting 450 new customers from Google every month. There's another related SEO strategy to this, and that is number two, making sure each image has alt tech to rank on Google images. As we know in restaurants, people love to eat with their eyes when they not only search for dishes that they're craving, but then specifically look for images to figure out what looks good, what they would like. But Google can't know what images are because it's just software, at least not at this point. So what we need to do is provide Google what the image is so that it knows where to make it pop up. And that is called alt text, which is basically just the language that Google needs to figure out what is in an image. Because once Google figures that out, they can rank that image in the search results and under Google images. So what I've seen work best is having tons of menu images on your website, on the online ordering, on the dish pages, on the home page, and for each of the images, making sure to set strategic alt text. The best alt text formula I've seen work is saying best name of the dish in city state. So the formula would be for talk and tacos, best birria tacos in Miramar, Florida, or maybe for an Italian restaurant restaurant that I know. One of their most popular dishes is garlic bread. So it would be best garlic bread in Lakeside, California, and so forth. You get the idea. If we go back to the talk and tacos example that we were talking about earlier, a huge part of their 450 new customers every month come from Google images. Because if we look up all of their most popular dishes and then click into Google images, they have tons of pictures with alt text. Like for that term we were just talking about, best birria tacos in Miramar, Florida. If you click into Google images, six of the first nine images on Google are pictures of their menu items. Then when people click on the picture because it looks good, it brings them right to their image landing page where they can see reviews, see a description, see pictures, and even place an online order then and there. A quick note on this, the name of the dish should be as generic as possible. Like if your garlic bread is called Garlic Otavio's Bread, then just rename it online to Garlic Bread or what somebody would be searching for if they didn't already know your menu but wanted that dish. By the way, if you own a 
restaurant and want me to take a look at your website and give you tips on improving your Google rankings, then comment your restaurant name and the city it's in down below. As you may be able to tell, I'm super passionate about restaurant marketing and I love chatting with my YouTube audience. So I'd be more than happy to take a quick look at your website and your online presence and make other recommendations to you about how to improve your Google rankings from here. Also, I've got a quick favor to ask. The like button is the simplest way to communicate that. It's the big thumbs up one. Just click it down below. So let's cover the third piece of Talk and Taco's genius SEO strategy and then move on to the two other best strategies for marketing a restaurant in 2023. The third piece of their SEO strategy is making sure the website is not only modern and beautiful, those things are table stakes. Yes, it has to be beautiful, but most importantly, it has to help the guest make an easy buying decision by giving them all the information they need in order to make that decision. The best format I've seen work for a restaurant homepage again and again and again is this formula. You start off that homepage with a section that's like the summary section on the restaurant. We have a phrase that hints at the restaurant's differentiation and its story, along with a beautiful menu picture that entices the visitor to keep scrolling. This is so important because when a guest first lands on a website, we have less than seven seconds to grab their attention and help them decide if they should keep scrolling. Then the next section is a slider of the most popular menu items to allow people to see a menu preview. And again, eat with their eyes. See the gorgeous pictures, see what's popular, see what they might like on the menu. Because the question at this point on the guest's mind is, hmm, I wonder what food they offer and if I would like it. As you can see from the Talk and Taco site, pictures with the menu item names are the best way to accomplish this. It's just enough information to make people start craving the food and click into the menu for more information. That is exactly what we want. And even a link to online ordering right on those pages that are for each dish is super effective. And the third section is the review section. Reviews are rich content that Google appreciates and they are proven to increase the rate of people actually ordering from the restaurant, which in turn actually helps the restaurant rank higher in Google's eyes. It's not just about converting website visitors. Google is increasingly using behavioral signals, which is how people interact on your website to determine how they should rank that website. These are important to have on the homepage, reviews that is, because 70% of people check online reviews when deciding on a restaurant. And we don't want them going to the unfair third-party review sites where they can see the ridiculous things that the Karens complain about. We want to give them a curated review experience that best describes our restaurant, that talks about our experience and our story, and that drives them quickly to a buying decision so that they either come into our restaurant or place an online order directly on our website. So now that we've got the steady source of new customers from SEO, how do we make as much in sales and profit from them as possible? That brings us to the best restaurant marketing strategy, number two of three on this list, which is the strategy for increasing the size of each order and making sure that we maximize sales on each transaction that happens with our restaurant. And the best restaurant marketing strategy for increasing the size of each order is building up selling into your ordering experience. You may be thinking, people think of marketing they think of promotions and advertising, but I define marketing as taking action to increase sales. And this action is one of the most powerful ways to not only increase sales, but more importantly, increase profits. This strategy combines Amazon's playbook where they're constantly showing the frequently bought together section when you're adding an item on Amazon. I don't know if you've noticed that. Or another way they describe it is similar items to consider. It combines that from Amazon with the McDonald's playbook. The McDonald's playbook is the classic McDonald's line, which doubles their profit every time a customer says yes. That line, I'm sure you can guess it, is do you want fries with that? anytime you order an entree at McDonald's. And it turns out that when you combine these strategies online for your restaurant, it's even more profitable to upsell than it is to do in person for a few different reasons we'll cover. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here. Restaurant owners love upselling because you train your best servers to do this when they're taking orders over the phone or in person already. So the question then is how do we make sure that every online order gets upsold the right way, the way that our favorite server does to increase our sales and increase our profits. 
To go back to the example from earlier, Talkin' Tacos does this really well and has been able to take their average size up by $5 as a result while doubling their profit on online orders. Here's the magical math behind upselling online. The average order size of an online order is about $50. Usually, that order size will be mostly from the guest ordering entrees. That's what makes up the bulk of restaurant revenue, entrees. But the food cost on entrees, if we think about how much they cost to make, is actually usually more than other items because entrees tend to include expensive ingredients like meat. So. Let's say that our restaurant operates a 10% profit margin, which is actually a bit higher than average, but it'll make the math in this example simple. That means that on that $50 order that is average, we're making about $5 in profit. Now, here's where things get really exciting. If we're able to get the average order size up from $50 to just $55, by upselling the right items through the experience of the guest building their order online, we don't just increase our sales by $5, although we do do that. We also increase our profit by about $5. And our profit was previously just $5. So it goes from being $5 to $10, which is a 200% increase. Now, that's why upselling the right items is so important. The right items to upsell are the ones that are low food cost, high profit margin items. These are appetizers, beverages, and desserts on your menu typically. That's why McDonald's is always pushing fries because fries are oil and potatoes. They cost them like seven cents to make in the bulk that they're buying and they charge $2 for them on the menu. Luckily for us, these appetizers, beverages, and desserts that make the best upsell items also pair best with the entrees. So how do we use all these different facts and these restaurant industry hacks to build an amazing ordering experience that doubles our profitability on each order? If you're using something like Toast or any cloud-based point of sale like Clover or Chow Now for your online ordering, you can do it manually. The way you do it is you create two optional modifiers for each of your entree dishes. The first one is titled select your beverage so that anytime somebody's adding entree, they can optionally select their beverage. Then the second one says select your dessert with three options that pair best and the price increases depending on those options. If you're setting it up manually this way, it's best to select dishes which don't have modifiers themselves. Like hopefully it's the carrot cake, which you can't really modify or something like that. So that if you just see item added to the order on the ticket or KDS, there's no question to how a guest wants it. Or if you want an easier way to do it, the system we've developed at owner.com does this automatically. I will say full disclosure, I am an extremely biased source as the co-founder and CEO of the company, but I think our tech is pretty freaking awesome. It uses customer ordering data to figure out exactly what customers tend to pair most frequently with the dish that they're ordering in any given moment. And then it uses that data to upsell those dishes automatically that pair best with what they're ordering through the ordering experience. And it's not limited to just items without modifiers. When they add an appetizer, it also just entrees that pair well with it. And entrees, it'll suggest desserts and sides and beverages. Not only that, but it allows you as the restaurant owner to mark the dishes that you want to push as part of your ordering experience. Maybe you have a new menu item or an item with a particularly low food cost that you want to push that people love. That is a good place to do it. Anyway, as much as I love our system, this video is not a commercial for our company. So let's get back to the video content. We've now covered number one, the best restaurant marketing strategy for getting new customers. And number two, the best strategy for increasing the size of each order. That just leaves number three, the best restaurant marketing strategy to turn new customers into regulars. But before we cover that, if you've gotten value from this video, click that subscribe button down below to make sure you don't miss out on future restaurant marketing videos. I post a few videos a month where I share what is working best today based on my experience now in working with thousands of restaurants to increase sales. And not only what is working, but how to execute it like the most successful restaurants in the industry. So if you would find that helpful, clicking that subscribe button below, it'll send you an email every time a new strategy comes out. Speaking of strategies, 
The best strategy I've found for turning new customers into regulars is building automatic email and text message marketing campaigns for each part of the customer journey. Before we discuss the how, of building automatic email and text campaigns, let's first quickly cover why that is so important and why it can totally change the economics of the restaurant. We all know that turning new customers into regulars is where the real money in the restaurant industry is made. Because if you're like most restaurants, the 20% of customers who are your most loyal regulars end up making over 80% of your revenue. It is super valuable to have regulars that consistently order from you again and again. They have higher average order sizes. They rave about your restaurant to your friends. Of course, providing amazing food and a great guest experience is the most important factor in whether guests become regulars. But I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that you already provide amazing food and a great guest experience. Because in the super competitive world of restaurants, with so many different options to choose from that are at least pretty good, it's also important that we stay top of mind with the people who are ordering from us. Guests today are being constantly bombarded with ads for other restaurants and hearing about other restaurants from friends. So how do we keep them thinking about our restaurant even in this very noisy world that we find ourselves in? You may be thinking, that sounds great and all, but I don't have time to send email and text message marketing campaigns. It's like a full-time job. Every week to have to log into MailChimp and figure out what to say and how to say it and what offer to use and how to link it to my online ordering and how to design the email and how to grow my email list in the first place. And I didn't sign up to be a restaurant owner so that I would have to also be a full time digital marketer. I have literally heard that thousands of times and I completely understand that it's not realistic to be doing that every week, which is why I think the best strategy is to set it up so that it happens automatically, so that we send messages to customers automatically depending on where they are in their customer journey. Here's how I recommend doing it. First, you turn your website into an email collecting machine. What I mean by that is when people visit your homepage, they should be immediately able to see a place where they can opt in to your marketing give you their email address, their phone number, their name, and not only see a place where they can opt in, but also see clearly what the benefits are from their perspective for doing it. My friend Antoinette, the owner of Ottavio's Italian restaurant that I mentioned earlier, does this super well. At the top of her website, she has a banner that says, join Ottavio's rewards, win $500. Then it says, be entered in a drawing to win at the end of the month. So she's giving a raffle-like incentive for people to opt in. And then when you click it, you get a simple pop-up that also details hey, you'll get discounts, you'll get notifications about specials and new menu items and special events that then ask customers for name, email, phone number, and birthday for marketing automation. I recommend either doing something like Antoinette or at least having a place that talks about how guests can get alerts on specials, alerts on new menu items, notifications about upcoming events, and maybe even rewards through joining your online club. To have a field that says, give us your email, you need to give them a reason to give you their email. Here's an interesting fact that I've learned now from having worked with thousands of restaurants and analyzed their websites. Even among the very best restaurants, like the, the creme de la creme, over 80% of those best restaurants restaurants website visitors will not convert into customers on that first visit, which is why it is so important to collect their information so that even after they've left the website, we can follow up with them. So once we've got those emails, what do we do? How do we actually use them? That is where the automatic campaigns come into place and why email marketing is so powerful. It starts by sending them an email which thanks them for signing up for email marketing while showing them pictures. Pictures are key in these welcome emails because people love to eat with their eyes and have already expressed interest in trying your restaurant at some point, which is why they've joined your list. So the pictures make it extra tempting to at some point order from your restaurant. Then after sending that welcome email and a few pictures with clear items, it sends emails like these templates that I'll put on screen that tell potential customers about the most popular items on the menu and about specials. And just as importantly, as we all know, we need to educate customers on why to order directly from our restaurant's website or our restaurant's app rather than third party apps like Uber Eats to avoid those crazy, ridiculous commission fees that wipe the profit margin off and that take away all the customer data. Their emails also tell the restaurant's story. 
how and why it started, what their specialties are, so that they're building that connection with the potential customer and turning them into an actual customer, into a new customer. Then the campaign switches. It goes from trying to turn them from a new customer into a regular with marketing automations that keep that customer ordering. The way they do that is through emails that stay top of mind with the customer, reminding them, hey, Friday night's coming back up. You should order our birria tacos again. Or if you liked our birria tacos, you might also really like these dishes, our birria grilled cheese and our birria ramen. It sends a reminder when that time and day that the customer ordered last week comes up, the next week, allowing them to reorder in just one tap. It reminds them maybe that the weekend is coming up or that, hey, Super Bowl Sunday is coming up and there's no better way to celebrate with tacos. All of these emails with the goal of cross-promoting dishes and getting the guests thinking about them for multiple different foods and times so that they really do become a regular customer. These automations increase frequency, increase order size, and are important for staying top of mind. In their case, they do it with both email and text message marketing, but I'd recommend starting with just email for simplicity. Then the last campaign I recommend is automating the customer win back campaign. This is for people who were regulars of ours at one point, but who haven't ordered from the restaurant in at least three months. The way it works is it tells the customer, hey, we noticed you haven't ordered in three months and we miss you. It then offers them a discount or a special offer. In all of these emails we automate, it's important to have delicious looking food pictures as well as big buttons next to them that allow people to easily click and easily order from your online ordering system or maybe even make a reservation if you're a full service restaurant to go through with actually making the transaction. It's critical we have a clear action to take. This is called a call to action. The easier we make it for the customer to act on the emails, the better results we will see hands down. So in terms of results, what results has Talk and Taco seen? Pretty epic results. With these automated campaigns, we can see in their dashboard that they've driven $1,710 over the last 30 days just from their email and text message marketing, from people clicking through on those emails and placing online orders that they wouldn't have otherwise placed had they not received those emails. The best thing about email and text message marketing is that there's no need to pay advertising costs and you own the customer relationship. You don't have to use Instagram and hope that they post to your customers without having to boost it. No, no, you own the customer data. You can send those campaigns whenever you want, saying whatever you want. And $1,700 a month in additional revenue is over $20,000 a year in additional revenue that they're getting just from these email marketing automations. Pretty epic. Simultaneously, they're deepening the connection with their regulars. They're making sure that the regulars that order from them turn into super fans. A few point of sale systems like Square offer basic versions of email marketing, which you can absolutely use and set basic versions up. But what Talk and Tacos uses is the platform we created that I mentioned earlier, owner.com, which makes this way easier and provides this whole solution, including powering the banner on the website to actually get the emails in the first place and that pop-up, including integrating with the online ordering system so that we can promote dishes that we know they might like based on their ordering data, including doing the smart marketing automations, email, text message marketing. We now even support push notification marketing all in one. So it's all set up and executed for you without you having to go in and set things up manually. But like I said, you don't need to use owner to make this work. You can absolutely do it manually. Anyway, before we wrap up the video, let's summarize the key ideas we covered to make this as actionable and straightforward for you to follow as possible. In the first part of this video, we covered how the best restaurant marketing strategy for getting new customers is optimizing your website to show up at the top of Google. Google SEO. It works even better than social media because on Google, when people are searching for specific types of restaurants or the food that you offer, they're already ready to buy. They already really want that dish. They don't need to be convinced to want, in the Taco Tacos example, Birria Tacos in Miramar, Florida. They're just looking for the best option, which is an amazing advantage as a marketer. By the way, if you want me to take a look at your restaurant online and give you specific pointers about the things that you can improve from this point, about your website, about your online presence, about your SEO, then just comment your restaurant name and city below. It'll take 10 seconds and I'll take a look and get back to you within 24 hours on the top things that 
I recommend doing based on your case, your city, your restaurant. In the second part of this video, we discuss the best restaurant marketing strategy for increasing our average order size to increase sales and more importantly, double our profits from online orders. It involves making sure that every time an entree is being added to an order that we suggest the best appetizers and beverages and desserts to pair with it. Because those items, appetizers, beverages, desserts, sides, tend to have low food costs and there's no additional labor costs or any other costs. So when they get that item added to an order, it's almost pure profit for the restaurant. And that is a massive advantage. Then in the third part of this video, we discussed the best restaurant marketing strategy for increasing how much each customer is worth to us after they become a customer by increasing their ordering frequency and increasing their retention and increasing their average transaction sizes with automatic email and text message marketing campaigns that treat them differently depending on where they are in their customer journey. Whether we're trying to get them to actually become a customer from having just given us their email on our website to having them go from new customer to regular or maybe regular that has since forgotten about our restaurant to then becoming a regular again with a win back campaign. What I've seen work best, like I described, is one automatic campaign to turn website visitors into new customers, one automatic campaign to turn new customers into regulars, and one automatic campaign to win back any regulars who haven't ordered from us in a while. And if you want a platform which makes each of these things 10 times easier, then lucky for you, there has been a crazy nerdy kid who has been working on restaurant marketing stuff for the past six years since he was 17 years old and has now spent tens of millions of dollars quite literally on building a platform in a company used by thousands of restaurants that do exactly these things automatically and a lot more by the way that company is called owner.com and i may be a, a little bit biased here but i'd recommend at least getting a demo taking a look for 20 or 30 minutes to see if it's a fit to save time and executing all of these things to increase sales, to increase the value of each customer, to increase profitability. Like I said, does all these things in one. But also, like I said before, in fairness, all of these strategies are possible to execute regardless of what platform you use, whether it's owner.com or Squarespace or Wix or MailChimp or Chow Now or any of the other alternatives. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and want a deeper dive on the SEO strategy we covered first, I'd recommend watching my SEO for restaurants video. I just posted posted it and that thing is a banger. It is all of the most high leverage things you can do to improve your restaurant's rankings on Google right away. I'll have it posted on the screen for you so that you can click into that video and see how we cover the most important things to make sure your restaurant shows up at the top of Google, but for free, without having to spend money in Google ads, without having to hire an expensive SEO consultancy, and then step-by-step step how to do those things. We cover it in a lot more detail than we were able to cover in this more broad video. Anyway, hope to see you there and take care.